I repeat, he's not going to back off. So what, what is your strategy? How do you want to get him out of power? Uh, two ways how to dismiss the dictator from the power. One way is uh, to use force, to use public uh, that would uh, come and get some administrative buildings and so on and so forth, you know, and thus uh, take uh, uh, the control over the administrative uh, buildings in Belarus. And the second one that uh, we are trying to move forward with is <clears throat> to convince the people uh, and to convince the international community that uh, they should recognize Svetlana as the only uh, legitimate president, uh, as the president-elect. And uh, in this case, all the uh, people that serve uh, in, uh, uh, in the government or in the military or in any law enforcement agencies uh, should uh, back up her uh, rather uh, than uh, staying with illegitimate uh, president of uh, the country that, uh, that will be staying with Lukashenko. But I, I think that uh, um, uh, the core thing is that it should be a continuation of the mass protests in the country <clears throat> uh, and, uh, uh, and strikes on the companies. So Lukashenko now obviously has lost the control over his apparatus, over his bureaucracy, that's for sure. They will not move forward now uh, to uh, support any of his acts, decisions, and so on and so forth. Uh, it would be like the so-called Italian strike, that uh, <clears throat> if somebody so would called? give an order. <clears throat> Italian strike. Okay. I think it's called Italian strike. The idea is that, you know, just for some governmental officials or the policemen, they cannot uh, go to strike because it's forbidden by the law, but they can do their job very, very poorly, yeah. demonstrating yeah. that they are not uh, want to do this job. I think that this would be the strike from the side of uh, Belarus officials and law enforcement agencies. They will never attack people and they will nev never go enthusiastically to fulfill uh, Lukashenko's agenda. And um, uh, <clears throat> can you hear me? <clears throat> yes, I can. Yeah, yeah can I you can. Hear me? Uh, okay. And, and, the, uh, and another thing is that if he would make any decision and if somebody from the government would uh, try to uh, fulfill this decision, then the overall Belarus public will never uh, follow it, will we'll never obey anymore. So um, it's, it's understandable that Lukashenko appeared to be alone uh, and uh, none, nobody from uh, Belarus uh, public would ever follow his instructions or decisions. Uh, the second uh, part is very important. This is the first. The second is that um, Russia and Putin personally, I think he will start to treat him very, very badly after everything he had uh, said to him. And so the third thing is that the uh, countries of the West, the countries of uh, the Western Europe, they would, uh, uh, and they have already d practically done him as a person non grata, persona non grata. So, um, uh, you know, they will never shake a hand with him. They will never negotiate with him. They will never recognize him as a legitimate president of the country. So, you know, just he will be like in the grips from uh, Belarus public, from Belarus society, from the East and from the West. I'm pretty confident that uh, uh, he will be also pushed uh, from the side of Russia because uh, Russia would start to talk to him uh, knowing his real uh, rating. And believe me, uh, they would treat him as not as a strong man, as a strong president, despite everything they uh, say now. So I would like to add, so while we are not in Belarus, because we're not able to be in Belarus right now, we're doing our best to work with the international community to deliver the message on that Svetlana Tikhanovska is the only legitimate president. And uh, we also uh, approach all the international leaders and ask them not to recognize Lukashenko as the president to elect, because for Belarus, he's not a legitimate president any longer. So this is what we're working closely right now. And one more thing, we are working on the creation of the funds, which, which are going 
going to help the Russian people who suffered from repressions because you know many many people lost their jobs many people got wounded many people got uh, killed and many people are missed missing and their families and the loved ones they need the support from uh, this funding so we are working on uh, we're working on this right now as well so the <coughs> I just wanted to add on top of this.